Welcome to this week's edition of Matucci's at Home Cooking with Corey. We're going to be doing a classic Italian dish for you today. It's going to be risotto with house-made guanciale, butternut squash, sun-dried tomato, a little onion, garlic, and mushrooms. It's going to be paired with a side salad, and we got some bruschetta for you as well with herb goat cheese, prosciutto from Parma, Italy, and a little scallion on top and pickled onion. All right, folks, first thing we're going to do is make our bruschetta so you can enjoy it at any time, either before or with your meal. Uh, there's going to be eight pieces of the house-made baguette. We're going to put that on a sheet pan in a preheated oven for about two minutes so we can crisp it up. Uh, and then we're going to add our herb ricotta, our prosciutto, pickled onion, and some scallion. And I'll show you that here in just a second. All right, it's been two minutes. We're going to pull out our bruschettas, perfect, nice and toasty, nice and crisp. Also with your bruschetta, the baguette, you can do it in a toaster oven or on a grill. Uh, now we are going to cut our scallion. So you're gonna do all three right now. So we'll do this on a bias cut. And we got those, beautiful. And then our prosciutto, we're going to slice that as well. Or you could just tear it and put it on top. There we go. Now we're going to take a knife or whatever you like. Some of our herb ricotta. And spread that on like so. And we're going to put some of our prosciutto, pickled onion, and a little scallion. And two different flavors of onion going on. It'd be delicious. Now your bruschettas are ready to go. We're going to take our sun-dried tomatoes and slice them nice and thin. This is going to be for our risotto. I'm going to prep it out ahead of time. Make sure everything's ready. All the other ingredients are already done for you. For the risotto, we're going to start with a preheated medium-high heat pan. Add about an ounce of olive oil, enough to coat the pan. And from there, we're going to add our guanciale that's already been cubed up for you, house-made. It's classic. At this point, we're going to render the fat. You don't want the heat too high or it'll burn it. Um, but we're going to render the fat until it gets nice and crispy. And then we'll start our next step. It's been about two and a half minutes. You can see it's getting nice and crispy. Our fat's rendered out of it, which is beautiful. Now we're gonna add our onion. And get a little sizzle and break those up a little. And the onion's gonna slow down the crispiness a little bit of the guanciale, release a little bit of water. And cook these for about a minute and a half. And then we're going to add our mushrooms next. And it's been about a minute and a half, we're getting some nice color on our onion. It's starting to soften up. Now we're going to add our mushrooms. Just gonna soak up a little bit of that fat and get a nice flavor. We're gonna do our mushroom for about another minute. Then from there. All right, it's been a minute and a half. We're getting some nice color on our mushroom. It's starting to soften up. I wanna let you know too, before I add the uh, tomato, the reason we do this is it's an Italian phrase, sofrito, which means layering your flavors. It's very important to layer your flavors. Now we're gonna add the tomato. This is gonna be about 30 seconds, and then we're going to add our garlic. Now we're gonna add our garlic. The reason I'm doing this now at this stage, so if you add it first, it's going to burn. All I want to do is release the oils out of the garlic and let it bloom. Now that we have that mixed in, we're going to add our roasted butternut squash. We're doing this last because it's already roasted and cooked. So we don't need to cook it anymore, we just need to heat it up. Nice toss, and oh, it smells amazing. And now we're going to add a little porcini powder, get a little depth to it. Mix this in, a little brown. You always want to 
toast your spices, you know there's a little bit of moisture, it's not enough to make it goopy. Um, and again, pull all the oils out of the porcini powder. Now we're going to go to a high heat. Let it sit for about 20, 30 seconds. And we're gonna add white wine, deglaze it. And let that reduce just a tiny bit. And release all the goodness from the bottom of the pan. All that flavor, the richness. Now we're gonna take our risotto and we're going to add it in. Just point it and break it up. The risotto we've already done to al dente for you. So we're only going to have to cook this for three to five minutes. This is nice and broken up. You hear it sizzling a little bit. We're going to add half of our chicken stock and turn it down to a medium high again. Now let the chicken stock reduce out, get everything nice and incorporated. And then about two minutes, we'll add the rest of our chicken stock, go for about another two to three. And then from there, we'll add butter, a little salt and pepper. All right, it's been two minutes and I've been constantly stirring to ensure that it doesn't stick to the bottom. And now we are going to add the rest of our chicken stock and our butter. Mix that in nice. And at this point, I'm gonna do some nice sea salt and black pepper to taste. Next, we're gonna plate with some candy pecans and scallions on top.